All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for the night. And God, I thank you for our Wednesday night Bible study. And God, it's always good to come to your house and worship you. Uh, God, we just pray that you'd speak to our hearts through the word. Uh, God, your word is truth. It is life. Uh, Lord, I just thank you that we can come and just learn more about you and be reminded, uh, Lord, of who you are and what you have done for us. So God, thank you so much. Uh, be with our kids that are at children's camp. Uh, God, I just pray you bless them. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you be with our youth and all that is going on. And just thank you for Wednesday night Bible study. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would turn to Psalms 139 tonight. Psalms 139. And I want to speak to you tonight on the subject of God knows me. God knows me. When you think about it, and you think about who God is, and you know His sovereignty, His all-knowing, uh, you know, providing salvation for us, uh, you know, you can't, you can't say enough about God. And to try to wrap your head around this, and this is what I was doing. Uh, it was last week when I uh, thought about this a particular passage. Uh, you know. You wonder how, and, and again, I know it's God, he can have all these folks praying to him at the same time, but yet he knows who is praying, he knows what they're praying, and he answers our prayers. Uh, and again, folks, all I can say is God knows us uh, really, really well, and I, th I thank the Lord for that. So God knows us. Verse 1, O Lord, you have searched me, and know me. That's where I got the title of the lesson, okay? You have searched me. And again, I think there's two words uh, that, that are important in this first verse. One is he knows us personally, okay? He knows us personally. And, uh, you know, we'll see later on that he created us, but everyone has a personality. Everyone is different, okay? It's kind of like uh, tonight, uh, my wife got me this shirt uh, for my birthday, and uh, you know, look on, on it, you think it's, it's a fall shirt, but if I turn around and show you the back of it, all right, it's a Harley Davidson shirt. And you know, there are some people that think, now you're a preacher, why are you wearing that to church? Well, number one, Lori got it for me. <laughs> Uh, number two, there is nothing wrong with riding a motorcycle. And I know what they're associated with. They're, you know, there are, just like everything, good ones and bad ones, okay? But this shirt doesn't define me, okay? It's just a hobby that I have. And I'm just telling you, folks, I love to ride. I just love it. Uh, every Friday that I can, I'm out, and then once a month, I'm with the church out riding. But it doesn't mean that I'm a thug, it doesn't mean that I carry a gun, it doesn't mean that I'm, you know, scaring people, all right? God knows me, God knows my heart, God knows that I love him, God knows that this shirt changes absolutely nothing about me. He knows us, folks, and, and, and that's, that's a personal way. Uh, because, folks, I have a lot of acquaintances. Now, you think about this. There's a difference between a friend and an acquaintance, okay? A true friend is there for you no matter what. Acquaintances are people that you have a fellowship with, but they don't, probably don't know you intimately, and that's the second word I want to share here. He knows us personally, and he knows us intimately. He knows how we think. He knows our motives. He knows what we are going to do before we do it. And there are times, you know, that I know he's up in heaven and I'll say something or do something and he just starts shaking his head. All right? Because I have had people tell this. Matter of fact, the first year I was here, after, after the first year, uh, George Griffith and Orville Biddle was finishing a deacon's meeting and they looked at me and said, we've never had a preacher like you. All right, and I didn't quite know how to take it then, 
but I felt like it was a compliment, okay? You know, there's, there's certain, you know, you know, ways that preachers or, or some preachers act. And folks, I, I have reverence for God. I, I, I believe in God. I preach my heart out, all right? So, you know, you can't, let me put it this way. You can't know a book by its cover, okay? You can see somebody that may look a little suspicious, okay? But yet, they may be a genuine Christian that loves God with all their heart. But, but to see this first verse, God knows me personally, God knows me intimately. Look at verse 2. You know my sitting down and my rising up. He knows everything you do. Everything you do. You understand my thought afar off. And that one right there, I, it should make us afraid, but it should make us think. You know, and, and we talked about that Sunday, about the mind of Christ. Folks, I am telling you, Proverbs tells us, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your whole Christian life evolves around what you put into your mind. Okay? And that's why the Word of God in our minds are so important. I cannot tell you uh, whether you're a new Christian or been a Christian for 40 years. We have to put the Word of God in our lives. We have to make that a part of us. You understand my thought afar of off. You comprehend my path and my lying down. And again, he, he knows everything that we are going to do in a day's time. He knows it before it happens. He knew the date of your birth before you were born. He knows the date of your death even right now. I'm telling you, if you could get up there and get in his mind, he could tell you exactly the day and the hour, exact hour you were going to pass from this life. Isn't that crazy? God knows us that well. And here's what I'm saying. I just thank God that we have a personal God, that we have a God that knows us intimately and that loves us. And that's what it's saying. And you are acquainted with all my ways. And I've talked about the way we think, but we have the way we act, our motives and our attitudes. God knows all of these things in our lives. And he still loves us with all of his heart. For there is not a word on my tongue, but, be, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. Okay? And this old proverb, this old advice, we still need to take, folks. Think before you speak. All right? Think before you speak. It's, it's so, so important. Verse 5, you have hedged me behind and before now, what is hedged, okay? It's kind of like a getting, getting cattle into a certain place, okay? And, and God even does that. God pushes us into directions. Now, not physically, okay? But he can guide us, all right? When we may uh, be straying off and maybe doing something, you know, that, that may not be real good or something, he can hedge us back into the fold, and you laid your hand upon me. Oh, folks, uh, even in my own, you know, what I, what, what I did and what I went through, you know, I had COVID, uh, and then after that, I had double pneumonia, and there were times, I am just telling you, folks, uh, there were times that I could not breathe. I didn't even know, honestly, that I was going to live, much less be able to get back where I am now, because I'm telling you, uh, I took my vitals this morning. My heart rate was 71. My blood pressure 110 over 68. And my oxygen was 99 this morning. Folks, he is the healer. He is the healer. That's, that's laid his hand upon us. And it says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, and I cannot attain it. Folks, we can be and, and I'm all for education. I really am. I'm all for, if, man, if you want to be a doctor <clears throat> or you want to have a master's degree, you know, if you want a PhD, man, if that's what you want, you know, go for it. I think it's great. But still, what it's saying is you'll never reach the level that God is 
He is all knowledgeable. Uh, he knows everything there is to know in life, and it is too wonderful. Folks, my whole point in this whole lesson is how wonderful God is. God is so wonderful. I mean, if, if you just think uh, how we mess up and you know, how we make wrong choices and how you know, we take the long way home sometimes, and, uh, you know, and, and there are times, Lord, that, he, that the Lord has to kind of get us back in. But just to know that He knows us intimately, wants to have fellowship with us, Okay, and folks, I love the word fellowship. In Acts chapter 2, it was literally talking about kononia is the Greek word, and that is intimate fellowship with one another. And that's what I love about our church, folks. Uh, man, you know, we're not putting on an act here. We love every guest that comes in here. It doesn't matter the color of your skin, what you have on, where you came from, or any of that. Matter of fact, every once in a while, I'll look on the guest card and it'll just say, very friendly church. And folks, that's what we need to be. And uh, it's just great to know uh, that God uh, is so wonderful to us. Now look at verse 7. It changes gears here. Now where can I go from your spirit? And let me, ask, let me answer that for you. Nowhere. If you are a Christian, God's spirit is inside of you, and there is nowhere you can go that God's not already there. Not, not already there. Or where can I flee from your presence? I think of the first example in the Word of God, fleeing from His presence. Adam and Eve sinned, and what were they doing? Hiding behind trees. Well, folks, how dumb is that? All right, God knew where they were. Okay, there's no place we can go to get away from God. And there's other folks that have run from God. All right? Jonah ran from God. But I don't care how far you run, folks, God is still there. Or where can I flee from your presence? Folks, we need the presence of God in our lives. It is so important that God leads you and God guides you and God is with you every step of the way. Verse 8, if I send, ascend into heaven, you are there. And folks, that's going to happen one of these days. I'm telling you, the rapture of the church, I believe with all my heart, is close by. It is close. Uh, there are people that are already making predictions for this fall. And, and they are around festivals, the, the Jewish festivals that are coming. Again, I'm not saying that's when it's going to be. I'm just saying after teaching Revelation, we could, uh, God could come at any time. So if I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. And again, you know, we don't want to make our beds in hell. The point is, he knows who's saved. He knows who's not saved. He knows who's going to heaven. He knows, be, again, because of the sovereignty of God, because of the, because of the all-knowingness of God. Verse 9, if I take the wings in the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. And the wings of the morning is just a phrase that you know, can be you know, illustrated in several ways, but when I think of wings, I think of birds. Okay, and uh, birds, you know, they are free. Uh, nothing ties them down. Nothing makes them stay in the places that they are. And folks, there are people that have free spirits, okay? They just, you know, they're adventurous. They want to go places where nobody else has gone and, you know, do things like that. Folks, you can climb the highest mountain there is, and I'm telling you, God is there. And to the uttermost parts of the sea, one of the things I've never done that I want to do is scuba dive, all right? I've snorkeled, and that's a pretty cool thing there too, but I would love to to go where, you know, it's, it's deeper down in there and, and see that. And, and God knows everything about that. Verse 10, even there, your hand shall lead me. Folks, there is never a time that God is not available. There's never a time that God says, you know what? I'm going to be closed <laughs> during these hours. His prayer line is always there. His right hand 
will lead us. And a picture that I get in my mind here is, is a man, uh, you know, looking at a toddler, maybe a, a three or four year old, and you're, they're holding that, that kid's hand and they're walking down a road together. Folks, that's what God is to us. He leads us. Uh, Psalm 23 says, beside the still water, and your right hand shall hold me. And again, the right hand uh, in many instances shows strength. All right, God's there no matter what we are going through, no matter what is happening in our life. Our God is there according to Scripture. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. And again, you know, the, the darkness a lot of times is associated with evil. And I know kids that, you know, they just have to sleep with a nightlight. All right. I was never one of those kids. Uh, but when I was very young, uh, my parents, or are, are, we'd run out of bread and we wouldn't have bread for the, for the next morning. And uh, the grocery store was one block away from my house. And I can remember taking a quarter with me and buying a loaf of bread without any trouble. Well, when it was dark, I'm telling you, I'd walk out of my, my driveway like I was Joe Cool. But when I got past, there was a bush in our yard on the left. When I got past that thing, I ran all the way to the end of the block. Why? Because I was a little scared. I really was. And then when I turned the corner, the grocery store is right there, and I just walk in like I was something. <laughs> all right? Here's the deal, folks. I don't care how dark it is. God's there with you. I don't care what situation in life there is. God is with you. And folks, uh, he speaks to us. He loves us. He takes care of us. His right hand leads us and guides us. Verse 12, indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. Folks, I am telling you, wherever God is, wherever you can sense his presence, it doesn't really matter what's going on around you, okay? And we've all been in places, you know, to where we were in tight spots or something happened, a, an almost accident or things that happened to us. Folks, I'm telling you, I believe with all my heart, every one of us have a guardian angel, and I believe the presence of God is with us 24-7, 365. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. So, doesn't matter with dark or light. Folks, I am telling you, God is with us. God knows you. God loves you. And folks, that should give us uh, encouragement. That should give us uh, security. That should, that should just uh, make us understand there's, there's nothing to fear. We have no fear. 360 Five times in the Word of God, it tells us, Old Testament and New Testament, do not fear. As Christians, we have nothing to fear. Verse 13, for you, again, it's a break in Scripture. Uh, they're called pericopes. I learned this in Bibles uh, in, in when I was in school. And where the paragraphs end and a new thought begins, that's their pericopes. Just for, just for your information. Verse 13, For you form, formed my inward parts and covered me in my mother's womb. I am very happy to say today, right before I come, I turned on the 5 o'clock news and the amendment to the abortion has failed. All right? They had kicked it out and we're not... Yeah, go ahead and clap. You know, I'm all for that. All right? So it, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, folks... We believe that life begins at conception. Okay, that, you know, that's, that's life. The minute, again, I'm not trying to give you a, a lesson, you know, the sperm and the egg thing, you know what's going on. The minute they come together, life begins. And folks, God takes care of, of you know, folks in the womb. Jeremiah said, every since you were formed, you were going to be a prophet of mine. Matter of fact, I'm telling you, when I was younger, the last thing I thought about uh, was being a preacher. That was not even on my radar. 
But God had a different plan. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Folks, we need to quit comparing ourselves to others. We need to, you know, we shouldn't have low self-esteem. Okay, God made you. God created you. God likes you. God loves you just the way you are. And man, we buy into this goods of, of the beauty products. And, and again, I'm not against makeup. I, you know, ladies, do whatever you want to do. All right? But it doesn't change. God even says, man looks at the outside and God looks on the heart. You're beautiful to God anyway, no matter what is going on in your life. I will praise you, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous is your work. Folks, God has never made a mistake. And sometimes, you know, you hear harsh statements from parents to kids, and folks, it's just not right. It's just not right. That my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and skillful, skillfully wrought into the lowest parts of the earth, Remember, we all came from dust, folks. And again, you know, people, I, I get asked this question quite a bit. You know, uh, you know, is, is, is it wrong? Uh, oh, what am I thinking? Steve, help me out here. Not, not a regular burial. Cremation. cremation, thank you, I heard it. Is it wrong to be cremated? Folks, if you stay long enough in that casket, in the ground, you're going to turn to dust anyway. All right, and even my mother, my own mother said, whatever you do, don't cremate, don't cremate me. You know, all the evangelists, everybody tells us, stay out of hell, and then you're going to burn up my body. And I said, it, you're not there, folks. You're not there. Your soul, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Verse 16, your eyes saw my substance, yet being unformed, and in your book they were all written. God knows your DNA, folks. God knows your fingerprints. Uh, God knows the genetics that are in your life. And when you think about it, I don't have the stats right in front of me, but think of how many times your heart beats in 24 hours. Think of the blood vessels. I've read a stat one time, you know, you know, if you trace your blood vessels, it's unbelievable how far that goes. You know, think about your heart working and, and your lungs Think about all that happens uh, for you to breathe and to stay alive. Folks, God controls everything about you. God looks over you. The days fashioned for me, when is it? There were none of them. Matter of fact, the Bible says in Proverbs, you get to live 70 years, you've done a good thing. And I, I'm looking out here, some of y'all done a real good thing, all right? God has given you much more than 70 years, and praise God for that. And I love these last few verses. How precious are your thoughts to me, O oh God. Isn't that neat? God thinks about you. God thinks about you. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Oh, folks, God knows it. He knows the hairs on your head. He knows everything about you. Folks, He has blessed us. So many blessings that He has given us in our lives. And to know that God knows me personally and cares for me and takes care of me. He feeds me. He guides me. You could just go on and on about how well God knows you. We should be in awe of God. We should respect God, respect Him. We should praise our Heavenly Father. We should worship Him. Folks, I love our praise and worship music. All right, our praise team gets us ready for preaching, and we should have an attitude of gratitude. Father, thank You for this night, and God, I thank you that you know us personally. God, thank you that you know us intimately. And God, even with all of our faults, God, you love us any way you love us still. And God, I just want to thank you for the many blessings that you give us. I thank you that nowhere, no matter where we go, you're there. 
God, I thank you that you protect us. You, you nurse us back to health. God, you, you're, you're, you're like a, a bird and uh, the mother covering up the little babes. God, uh, the wings are, are just around us, and I thank you for that. God, I thank you for everyone that you have made here in this sanctuary and at home listening to us. God, you have not made any mistakes. But God, I thank you that we are fearfully and we are wonderfully made. And God, I pray tonight as we go to bed, we would just think about you and thinking about you knowing us and thinking about how much you love us and also thinking about how you sent your son to die for us. God, we really are privileged people. We are blessed people. And so, God, I pray that we would have just a, a, a grat- you know, gratitude in our hearts. God, I pray that even we would, you know, in some ways just break out into music when we're alone with you and just sing a hymn or sing a song of praise to you. So, God, thank you for always being there. God, you, you, you never leave us and you never forsake us. So God, I pray, and just as the psalm is, the psalm is a song. And God, I just thank you for the song that you wrote and that you put on David's heart to encourage us in the faith. God, sometimes when we're running, we get tired and sometimes we physically uh, just don't feel like we can go on. But God, we can with you, with you behind us. So God, thank you for everything that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.